Thank you all so much, and thank you, Wayne, and congratulations, Wayne, on, on pulling all of this together. We're going to move straight to our first major presentation here today, and I'd like to welcome Chris Carr to do the introductions. Thanks, Dave. Thanks a lot. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Chris Carr, and I'm the commissioner of the Georgia Department of Economic Development, which is one of the co uh, cooperating partners today, along with the Georgia Research Alliance, which is part of the department. But I'm here to introduce my former boss, United States Senator Johnny Isaacson. But Bef before I do that, I want to take one quick second to thank Wayne Lord. About four or five years ago, Wayne and, and a great team of folks, including Steve Morrison and Helene Gale and so many folks, we got together and started talking about this conference. But I want to point out the tireless effort that Wayne has done and the leadership that he has given to make this conference a reality. And, and, and Wayne, we have done a couple of things. One, we wanted to have a substantive conference. We wanted to provide an opportunity for people to build relationships and establish relationships. And we wanted to show that the metro Atlanta region and the state of Georgia are at the crossroads and the forefront of global health. And we have done that. So thank you very much, Wayne, for everything that you've done and for our team. We appreciate that. Uh, I, it, it, I know Senator Isaacson very well, and this is the second time that I have introduced him this week, and I know that he, he does not like it when you read his bio. So I'm not going to read the senator's bio. What I want to do is introduce, uh, uh, tell you a little bit about how the senator got into uh, the issue of Africa and global health. In 2008, leadership came to us and asked Senator to join the Foreign, Affairs, uh, Foreign Relations Committee. And we readily accepted. That was a position that he wanted. And, and during that time, they came and said there's a, an opening to be the ranking member of the Africa Subcommittee. And the senator in the House had been to Africa on the Education Committee. He'd been to Ethiopia. He'd been to Egypt. But this isn't necessarily an area that he had a lot of expertise, but he readily accepted. And the senator did what he does on every issue that I ever saw him uh, work on. He rolled up his sleeves. He went to work. He studied. He talked to experts, but more importantly, he started traveling to Africa. And there's nothing that he's become more passionate about than Africa and, and the issues of health, education, and economic development. And each year, he goes back. And it has become a passion of his. And it's something that we should all be proud of because he's become a leader in Washington, D.C. So with that, it was a short introduction, but please welcome my former boss, United States Senator Johnny Isaacson. Well, Chris, thank you very much. That's my kind of introduction, short and sweet and to the point. I appreciate it very much. And Helene, thank you for what all that CARE does, Steve. Thank you for your co-sponsorship today. And Wayne Lord, let me tell you about Wayne Lord. If you ever need somebody to man a project and see, bring it to fruition, Wayne Lord is the guy. I have never seen a more tenacious, harder worker on a project than anybody anywhere, anytime, any place. And although I don't know that it's a secret, and I hope it's not because I'm going to make sure it's not a secret, Wayne is retiring at the end of this month. He's going to Virginia. He's going to be closer to me than he is right now, and I'm delighted of that because we're going to work on some projects. But, Wayne, you deserve a random round of applause for all you've done for six <laughs> Chris is exactly right about how I took an interest in Africa. I want to add one point to it. When I took my first trip to Africa, after being named the chairman of the subcommittee on Africa because nobody else would take the job, I went to Africa and I fell in love with the African people for three reasons. One, they are intuitively a wonderful people. Second, they love to interact with us. And third, they're a tremendous opportunity for our country to develop friendships around the world. And so I took an interest in Africa and have traveled in Africa many, many times. Although I'm no longer on the Africa Subcommittee in Foreign Relations, I am now the ranking Republican on International Trade, which deals tremendously with Africa and the AGO Act, the African Growth and Opportunity Act. So I have a lot of tentacles into Africa. I have a lot of friends in Africa. And I'm so glad that CSIS and the World Affairs Council and CARE are sponsoring this third annual summit today, and I'm delighted that you asked me to be a part of it. You know, people say, what's so important about Africa? Well, let me tell you what's so important about Africa. There are a lot of people in Africa who are just at the bottom end of the developing scale in terms of developing countries. The opportunity for Africa to grow and prosper is tremendous, but Africa is going to have to have three things that it doesn't have right now. First of all, it's going to have to end its cycle of poverty. That's number one. Second, it's got to end its problem with hunger. And third, it's got to become a more healthy con continent. 
And health is one of the things we're going to talk about today, and I'm delighted to talk about it, because America is engaged and involved on many levels in global health, but in particular in Africa. We are fortunate in Atlanta, Georgia, to be a home of the World's Health Center, the Center for Disease Control at CDC on the Clifton Corridor. And Tom Frieden does a marvelous job 24-7. He's the hardest working guy I've ever seen. In fact, on Friday, Saturday, when I was going to speak and introduce the governor at a rally in Gainesville, Georgia, my BlackBerry goes off and it's an email from Tom Frieden bringing me up to date on a, political, a particular health issue around the world. He is passionate about his job. I've been fortunate enough as a senator to deal with three directors of CDC, none better than Tom Frieden and the great job that they do out there. Tom Frieden deserves a round of applause. America has made a tremendous investment in the continent of Africa in terms of health. I attended the National Prayer Breakfast about 10 years ago when our surprise guest speaker was Bono. Bono got up and spoke right before the President of the United States, who at that time was George W. Bush. And I will never forget this as long as I live. Bono stood up, and when Bono stands up, he has to get a elevator shoes. He's not a very tall guy, and he has a box that he stands on, so he looks over the podium. He's got a hell of a voice, but he doesn't have much height, I can tell you that. <laughs> Bono gets up behind the microphone and he turns to President Bush, who's sitting right to his left, puts his arm on his shoulder and says, Georgie, only one person in the room could have gotten away with that. He says, Georgie, you know, I'm going to invest $25 million in the continent of Africa to try and end AIDS. I think you ought to do the same thing. So he laid a $25 million challenge on the President of the United States in terms of dealing with what was the scourge of Africa, and that was the rapid proliferation of AIDS. And so the President's Emergency Program for the AIDS Relief was developed called PEPFAR. And in the last 10 years, America has done some remarkable things. Think about this. 10 years ago, and Helene, you can clean up when my statistics are not quite right, but I think I'm right on this. 10 years ago, if you were an African mother that was pregnant and you had the AIDS infection, your baby would probably die by the age of five. In fact, I visited the New Abani uh, Orphanage in uh, Nairobi, Kenya, Catholic Relief Services sponsors. It's an interesting place. You go there and they have about five acres of, of a five-acre cemetery where orphans who were brought to them, who were children born to a mother with AIDS, ultimately died by age five. They don't have any more ceremonies anymore, and they don't have any more funerals anymore. They built a school because now children born to a mother with AIDS because of their antiretrovirals and American investment in AIDS relief, they're born, they're born AIDS free. And they live a normal, healthy life, which is a remarkable gift of the American people. It's a remarkable gift to the world, and, and it's a very important gift. So anyway, at that particular breakfast, Bono inspired the President of the United States to look at the scourge of AIDS in Africa. And when we looked at it as a country, we realized what was going on in Africa could go on around the world. And we, knew, we needed a generation free of AIDS, and we need that disease to be conquered. And so because of the investment of the United States of America, because of the work of NGOs like CARE, because of corporate businesses like UPS that handle the logistics on Africa, the antiretrovirals are distributed around the continent, and we're turning the curve in terms of AIDS infection in, in Africa. In fact, one of the things, one of our biggest challenges now is so many people are now living a normal life in Africa who would have died from AIDS had it not been for the antiretrovirals. Maintenance of life is now the issue, not the termination of life because of the AIDS disease. And that's a good problem to have, but it's a problem that bears cooperation by the African countries to help us in the delivery system. America cannot be the world's policeman and the world's health care center. It needs to be the world's leader in security and leader in health. And I'm so pleased so many of the countries in Africa are now developing their own infrastructure, modest compared to ours, but a beginning infrastructure to see to it they can deliver the health care in terms of the testing, in terms of the diagnosis, and in terms of the distribution. Wayne mentioned Tanzania. I've been to the Village Savings Loan in Tanzania, Helene. I've seen firsthand what CARE is doing there. But I've also seen what Mark Green, our American ambassador, did to turn the Tanzanian government around and say, look, we can give you antiretrovirals forever, but we can't give you the health care workers, we can't give you the testers, we can't give you the hospitals. You're going to have to do some of this yourself. And the country of Tanzania took on itself to develop a, its own little mini CDC, Tom, modest by our standards but a mini CDC. So now every Tanzanian who's tested for AIDS is tested by a Tanzanian citizen. Every Tanzanian who gets antiretrovirals from the United States gets them from a Tanzanian distribu dis distribution center. And every bit of health care in Tanzania is now focused in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, not in Atlanta, Georgia, which is where it should be. So we, we have a lower expense as a country 
because we don't have to provide the workers, but we're still providing the antiretrovirals, and the infection rate is doing this. That's exactly what it's supposed to do, and that's exactly what we want to do in every single country in Africa. Af I was asked by someone out in the hall a little bit ago, why should America spend a dime in foreign aid and helping people in other continents when we've got all the problems we've got? Well, I'd like to address that subject for just a second. Nine-tenths of one percent is the federal foreign aid budget of the United States of America. Nine-tenths of one percent. That's a rounding error when you talk about DOD. It's a rounding error when you talk about VA. It's a rounding error when you talk about the Department of Education. But it's very important for our country because it represents the soft power of the United States of America. And you might say, well, what is soft power? Soft power is when you take the power of the American economy, ingenuity, universities, centers for disease control, and you share the knowledge that helps make us great and disease-free with countries who have problems with poverty, hunger, and disease. Soft power is critical to influence those votes in the UN when people say, well, who is it in the world that has helped us out? Well, the United States of America has helped us out. And so it helps your influence in terms of influencing democracy around the world and influencing the world community as to where the leadership should it be. Should leadership be in a country like the United States of America that leads by example? Or should it be in a country like Russia that now is trying to encroach on another country that's a democracy in, in itself? So soft power is important, and our investment in soft power is critical. Our investment in the PETFAR program has won people over, countless people all over Africa, because we're helping to solve a terrible scourge and a terrible problem. But there are other things we're involved. Basic Education Coalition in Africa is providing education to African women and African men and Muslim African men and Muslim African women, some place where women have been denied education totally. Now they're being allowed to be educated because of the United States. In fact, my first trip that Chris mentioned when I went to Ethiopia and Egypt was shortly after 9-11-2001, when President Bush and the Department of Education realized that a lot of the foreign aid we were sending to Ethiopia and Egypt was going into Muslim schools that would not, would not allow women to go to school. And so I was sent to Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, and then driven for about 200 kilometers down into Awasa, Ethiopia, stayed in a plywood hut overnight to meet the next morning with an imam and explain to the imam the United States was happy to provide educational assistance to the country of Ethiopia, but only if the Ethiopian country would allow women to go to school along with men. We changed the paradigm in Muslim countries and, Muslim and, and, and people of the Muslim faith to allow women to go to school. We leveraged our power of the economic investment in the people of Ethiopia and their education to see to it they did the right thing for Ethiopian women. We need to do the same thing in terms of health care, the same things in terms of hunger and poverty. And when you talk about disease for a second, it starts with good, clean water and potable water. Eighty percent of Africa doesn't have that. Eighty percent of Africa has water that is not drinkable, not potable, and not usable. But things are changing in Africa because of the Coca-Cola company and other companies who are making an investment on that continent. I've been to Ghana, and I've been to the Coca-Cola plant in Ghana, but I've also been to the package plant in a village about uh, three, mi three hours out of the capital. A package plant that takes water from the dirtiest river you have ever seen in your life. The nastiest water I have ever been around goes into a package plant. Sand filtration, gravel filtration, chemical treatment, but the ultimate key is ultraviolet ray treatment which kills all forms of bacteria. I was so impressed I bought a system like it for my house at Lake Raven to purify the water that I was getting out of my well. But I went to the village, and the village, the, the, the chief of the village and his wife, all the elders of the village, all the leaders of the village came. They had all these chairs out in the middle of this dirt area near surrounding this package plant. They invited me to come sit on the stage with the chief, and I did. And Chris Coons, the senator from Delaware, was sitting there with me. There were all these Coca-Cola plastic cups on this table. I didn't know what they were for. But they started explaining how this new package plant was going to work in their village. And they started dumping this terrible river water in this package plant. And we watched the river water go through the sand filtration, the gravel filtration, and the chemical treatment, and ultimately the ultraviolet ray, the purple light that kills all the bacteria. And then there was a little faucet at the end of the package plant. And they took that Coca-Cola plastic cup and they went and turned the faucet and put some water in and they gave it to me and said, drink it. I thought that was the end of my life. <laughs> it was, there was a little flat but it was great water, never had a problem. Those people in that village now have potable, clear, treated water because of an investment by an American country, company that taught them not just how to clean their water, but how to sustain the cleaning of their water because the Coca-Cola company charged them, each member of the village, seven cents a day for five gallons of water. 
Seven cents a day for five gallons of water is the sustainability rate in terms of income to keep up the maintenance and upkeep on that plant. So we're not giving them a gift. It's like the biblical admonition to teach a man to fish and they can eat for a lifetime. Give him a fish and he can only eat for a day. In the Ghana, the people have gotten their water for a lifetime because of sustainability and the investment of an American company. And clean water, as it spreads around Africa, will get rid of disease and the threats of disease, which are important to us as a country, which is the second reason it's important to invest American money in health care in Africa. You know, what's, you know what's the biggest threat we have? And Tom Frieden made me watch the movie Contagion, which gave me the willies and still does every time I think about it. But his biggest nightmare and mine every night when I go to bed is what if something got loose in the world and we couldn't stop it? And the word, diseases are always trying to beat our bacteria, beat our antibiotics, beat our technology. They're always trying to be a little bit stronger and a little bit more virulent. We have the situation right now with the Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome, MERS. We've had a couple of cases that have been identified, one in Saudi Arabia, one in the United States of America. Because of the CDC, we're on top of it. We're getting to the bottom of it, and we're going to see it doesn't spread and it doesn't go around. But because that disease started in Saudi Arabia, it gives you the illustration of why world health is important. You know, Martin Luther King, in one of his great letters from the Birmingham jail, said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Well, disease anywhere in a world of jet airplanes and easy technology is a threat to us, not just on the continent where it starts, but it's a threat to us in the United States of America. And it's invisible, and you can't see it, and it can get on an airplane, it can get on a ship, it can get a, in a, any different type of pathogen, but the next thing you know, it's here. So it's important to invest money to see to it that Africa is healthier, that we're capable of stopping diseases, and that we do better and better and better as we go. And I could go on and on with examples, but you get my point. That's why it's important for us to invest in foreign aid and invest in foreign countries, not to buy friends, but to win friends through soft power. My last point that I want to make in my remarks is simply this. Africa is also a hungry continent. It's not a very healthy continent. It's not a very developed continent, and it's a hungry continent. And I know ADCO is one of the sponsors here, and they have a tremendous project in Botswana where they're teaching Africans how to grow and sustain in a sustainable way. We're trying to teach them how to use genetically modified organisms and seed to develop things that can be sustained through weeds and I mean through weed infestation and disease infestation. We're taking American technology from the Cooperative Extension Service at the University of Georgia to see to it that agricultural technology is at the leading edge. And every time we can teach them how to grow their food and sustain that growth, we can end the cycle of, 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 uh, the cycle of hunger, the cycle of disease, and the cycle of poverty. There's a little company in Georgia called Manna. They're located in Fitzgerald, Georgia. You probably, anybody ever heard of Manna? Few people. Have, I know Helene has. It's a not-for-profit. What's the number one product in Georgia? It's peanuts. They take peanuts and grind them up into peanut butter paste. They take fortified vitamins and impact the the vitamins into the peanut butter and they take powdered milk and put it into the peanut butter paste and then they do hot seal packs you know like meals ready to eat MREs they do three and a half inch packs like the little ketchup package you'll see at, at McDonald's or Arby's they ship millions of them a year through the UN to be distributed to end famine and hunger and malnutrition the children in Somalia in Dadaab, which is the camp in northern Kenya where they're going to flee Somalia, those children that were dying two years ago are living today because of the technology in Fitzgerald, Georgia. They can get three packets of fortified peanut butter paste to a child who otherwise would have died from malnutrition that now is a healthy, happy baby. Georgia Peanuts and a Georgia company saving lives in Somalia and a, and a Somalian refugee camp called Dadaab. That's why it's important to make an investment in foreign aid. That's why it's important to invest in, hung in ending hunger, ending disease, and bringing about prosperity. America is a great country. You don't see anybody ever trying to break out of the United States of America. They're always trying to break in. And that's for a very good reason, because we relish freedom and democracy and peace and liberty. And the, what these three organizations, CSIS, CARE, and the World Affairs Council represent, and what this forum is all about today are the basic elements of humanity ending hunger, bringing about prosperity, prosperity and ending disease that is the key to the future of the continent of Africa and the relationship of the United States of America with the continent of Africa. 
So I thank Helene Gale, I thank Wayne Lord, I thank Steve for all you're doing to invest in this conference. You've got some great speakers today. John Rice is going to speak at lunch. He's a terrific guy, does a great job for GE Power Systems and General Electric and American Business. Tom Frieden's going to talk today. Helene Gale's going to talk today. I'm the warm-up act. I'm getting off because the hook is coming. I'm getting the signal from the back of the room. God bless you all, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you.